guys, welcome back to another set of J Vlogs. You guys watched the video of us assembling this lift. We're gonna build the GS, so here we are, me and SPG right now. Um, this is the front subframe of the GS. We're gonna get ready to shorten it up. And it's pretty simple by the looks of it, but you know you always run into problems, but yeah. Some key points when lowering the front subframe, you're gonna improve suspension geometry make clearance and then it lifts the engine up to like however much you shorten it so I'm just gonna cut out this right here and then weld it back on simple as it sounds we'll see how it goes are you ready ready for um spg fams <laughs> all right so this is a better look at it we got the t demand lower control arms and the coilovers in right now so yeah, that's it. Uh, we're gonna start doing it. I'm gonna get it powder coated too after we're done welding it to match my suspension. And then after this, we're gonna go over to the fuel systems, like I said. And we're gonna run the fuel tank and fuel lines, plumb all the fuel, and then we're gonna raise the floors. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this. All right, we got a rough estimate. We're gonna just chop this thing off and go from there and figure it out. No turning back. Good thing we got a spare, so this is the spare. There's one more in the car, but we don't wanna do it twice. <laughs> All right, we just got it cut off. It's pretty simple. Just cut it as best as you can. We just gotta do some grinding. We're gonna clean this up, make everything sh pretty straight. And then what we're gonna do with this is cut a slit right here and then fold it down so it's like pretty level. There's not a steep angle over here. And then we're gonna shave this down, make it level. And then Sterling's gonna work his magic and weld it back on. So we still gotta do the other side though. All right guys, kind of fucked up because we took off too much when I was cutting the spacers because you're gonna wanna leave it on so this thing doesn't collapse when you bolt it back onto the car. So we cut it off of here, and then we're gonna re-weld it on the subframe side. So we're just fine-tuning everything, making sure everything fits nicely. So you can have an easier time welding, so you don't gotta fill as much and stuff like that. But it's gonna be sitting like this. And the spacers are gonna go in between right here, so it doesn't collapse like I said. But we're gonna have to cut this so this thing can um, collapse down too or else it's gonna be in the way when you mount it to the car. That's pretty much it though, so. You know, it always takes longer on that one side because you're trying to figure stuff out, but kind of know how we're gonna do the second side. And then welding is another story, so hopefully that goes smoother, but we're moving along just fine. And then we got our MacGyver set up right here, the device that we got in the grinder. Sterling got the more fab experience um, compared to me, so he knows a little bit better when it comes to um, metal work, but it's always good to learn, so that's why we're here. You guys, remember the last time when we were doing CM subframe? We were doing it with a mediocre welder, uh, but not this time. Flashback. Alright everyone, we're uh, putting together the new cart for our welder. This is going to be for the GS build. Oh. Sterling just dropped some scripts. For this setup right here uh, we got to give a shout out to our boy uh lakahi at gas pro baby yes i oh <laughs> lakahi gave us the deals and the hookups for the miller 220. miller baby <sighs> and we got we got the whole nine yards we got this freaking argon tank baby for 100 percent this is a no holds build going on for gs so once we start topping out the floor radius radius radiusing these you gotta cut that. <laughs> I guess this is not only for this car, but just a good long-term tool to invest in if you like fabbing and shit like that. Um, and this is a quality product. This is not a uh, cheap baby, so. Not to sacrifice the SSR wheels. Yeah, certainly didn't end up buying wheels, so he bought this instead. <laughs> it's over. It's for the boys. There will always be another set of wheels I can get for that car. Yes, sir. All right, guys, you got the cart built. Right. It's Christmas. 
220 ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cute. Alright, I guess this is all the accessory kits. We got two gas regulators, we got the stick welder. But I might. It just might. Alright, here we go. Baby. All right, it's the moment of truth. What? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, it does fit. No way. <laughs> this could have been SSRs, but. Does it have it, to be? <laughs> this could have been Aero Spokes. <laughs> But you're playing with the 18s. 19 by 10, 19 by 11, psych! Because they couldn't sell me the 18 by 10 because the 17 step 18 not going to clear the fucking brake rotor and caliper. Fuck! Oh. <laughs> Guys, like you seen in the video that I plugged in of us getting this welder, there's a Multimatic 220 Miller, baby. It can do stick weld, MIG weld, and TIG weld. Um, what you seen starting doing the other day was all TIG welding. He did some MIGing too, but yeah, we got the two tanks right there. Um, the shielding gases and uh, this thing is pretty much automatic so it's like stupid proof so if you're a beginner and you got the money this will be the machine for you Ugh! and then yeah i got everything cleaned up now so it's time to weld it back just gonna tack it in we checked the level on it um leveled out this side it's not level right now but we did earlier so we're gonna tack in the spacers first then we're gonna level it and then probably tack in the subframe back together Got yeah, this cleaned up, everything else cleaned up, all the other surfaces. Okay, so Sterling just filled the spacer because um, I accidentally cut it with the cutoff wheel. Um, we weren't going to do it, but he's just going to, he tested it out. And then we're going to weld the plate on. We got like I said, we got to collapse the other side so it's um, flush with the subframe itself. All right, this side is tacked in. Now we're going to have to collapse the subframe so it's even right there. I'm gonna make a cut right here and see if we can bend it down. Get old Christopher made it to the party. Well, that already, but we can go a little bit more flush, that'll be better. That's the better. You know, because this edge going to melt and disappear, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this side. Yeah, just fucking. Oh, cut so it's one better more. that you overlapped it. Yeah, cut one more slice right here, or just cut this part off so the thing come flush. Yes, sir. All right. See, I'm Henny back at it with a fresh fade. Damn! Fresh yeah. fade, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Stock up yeah. all I wanna, baby. Just today. Food lad. Hell yeah. CM Mondays is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, Sterling is gonna blast this thing out. So it's, this side is pretty much set. Yeah. It's all tucked up. Yeah, now you just gotta blast it. Um, and it's hard to take when you're not in a shot because the wind just fucking blows the argon all over the place and it just starts fucking arcing everywhere. Yeah, this is some of the parts for the GS that I ordered. I think I spent about close to 800 already just on the fuel system. Just sent fittings and the fuel tank because the shipping for this shit was like 100 bucks and the tank was like 200, so it was pretty dumb. I went with a 15 gallon. It's aluminum. I didn't go with all like all top of the line fittings. I mean decent, but even the fuel filters, a lot of it was from Summit because this is not gonna be a race car, so I just needed to work. And I just didn't want to use the stock lines and everything. So let's go see what it's going to look like in the trunk. So that's pretty much what the trunk setup is going to look like. The other part is just figuring out all of the lines and everything. So I only bought a short 
full of line so I can just play around with the back because I only need um, a little bit line for the back side. And then once I plumb everything, whenever I need line, I'm gonna order it from the back to the front. That way when I'm doing the floor, when I'm raising the floor, I can route the lines inside so it won't get scraped or anything. Sterling's um, tacking up this thing. <laughs> yeah. We're getting there. We still gotta do the other side, but hopefully it goes uh, faster. All right, guys, you know how we do. We always gotta get the dominoes for the quick fix. Okay. Don't show that. Don't show that. Here you go. Oh, yeah. All right, we're gonna take a break and we're gonna eat real quick. So. Just relaxing right now. We got the winning combination. We're just gonna finish up this other side and then we'll probably finish the other side tomorrow because we're just um, cruising it. We're not rushed or anything, so. Yeah, we don't want to be grinding into the night too, so we don't want to work late hours and shit. Me. Yes. All right. Up. We're going to study the other time, make it, because the gap is kind of big. And then, like I said, we're just we're not going to finish this today, so we're going to continue the vlog tomorrow because we don't want to be grinding at night and shit. So at least we know what to do for tomorrow, so it'll be a little bit easier. Looking good. Looking short and. All right, this is the comparison right here. It's like less than one inch. And this thing is like fucking almost two inches. Maybe like 25 millimeter, 30 millimeter shortened. So that means it's gonna fucking fall down though. It's gonna fucking fit up. What about? Oh, I All right, guys, that's the difference right there for the subframe on one side. It's probably about 30 millimeters short or about 25 to 30, so almost like an inch shorter. That's it for today for now. We're going to continue tomorrow because it's dark already out, so we're just going to chill it, relax. I mean, we got all week to do it, so but that's like the first part of the project. And then I'm going to go get it powder coated. So we'll see you guys part two tomorrow in the morning. Yeah, so. Day two. We're back for part two. Day two for this thing. We're gonna do the other side now, like I said yesterday, so. We're gonna do the same process, repeat the same process. Do this other side real quick. Hopefully we can get it done quicker than yesterday. I think we probably can, but we got the gist of what to do, so. We're gonna do it real quick and then maybe try to go get it dropped off and get it powder coated, but that's probably gonna take a few days, two weeks, so depending on how busy they are. But yeah, let's get it started. All right, we're going in for round two. I'm just gonna cut this off real quick, um, just like yesterday, and then grind it off, get everything ready to weld up. All right, we got it cut off again. I think it went a lot better this time because we kind of knew where to make the cut and how, how far to make the cut. So now we're gonna just grind everything to length, clean everything up, and get it ready for weld. We did everything, it took us a bit to fine tune it. Um, now it's ready to be welded up, as you can see right there. Looks pretty good. Gonna have an easier time welding. Yeah, so we cleaned everything up. We just gotta tack it on. We'll go from there, smash this back in, make it flush again, so. It's a lot easier the second time. Look, it's a lot cleaner, because we knew what to do, so. Time to weld. Uh, not me, though. Uh. Just use the MIG to tack it up and fill in some of the bigger gaps. That way when we can just go back over it with a TIG, we can just blast right over and melt everything back in together. But we'll see. Hey guys, turning finish um, welding the sides up, as you can see. Looks a lot cleaner than the other side, but he ended up MIGging it because the wind was fucking blowing so we couldn't TIG. A lot. It just makes it that much more harder to weld when you're taking. Now we're gonna cut the slit so we can bend this um, flat side to the other side and then weld that bad boy up. All right, that's the one right there. Now we gotta hammer it down so it's flush. Go a little bit more. 
All right, starting welded it up with the MIG. As you can see, we got some nice beads. Good penetration. I don't know what I'm talking about, but. <laughs> yeah, now we're gonna grind everything clean and then getting ready for powder coat. Didn't take us that long, actually. It took us maybe two hours, if that. That's how it goes when you know what you're doing. We did it. The other side was a lot faster, like I said. Usually the case, but um, I called this one place to get it powder coated, and they said they're like 14 day out fucking wait time. So I tried somebody else, but I'm waiting for the reply. Um, if not, I'm just gonna take it to that uh, other, the first place that I called, because there's not much over here who can do it. Me and Sterling, I'm gonna go probably cruise around, go eat, try drop off the subframe to whoever replies first or whatever. Uh, I think we overall we shortened it about one inch. So next step is to get a powder coat and then when I get it back I can throw it in the car so Alright guys um we just we went to go get something to eat. Um trying to find the powder coating place for like the longest time and we couldn't find it but we ended up finding it. So we just dropped the subframe off. Um I don't know, we'll see. The color doesn't look to be exactly the same as the other suspension parts, but I mean it should be good enough. It's only gonna get scraped up anyway, so we'll see. Yeah, hope you guys learned how to shorten your front subframe on the GS. Pretty simple. Stay tuned for the next vlogs. Uh, and uh, a few words for Sterling. <laughs> This bitch back in the back of your minds I flip shorty Conscientious of money and social media stories I play the position locally back in my jersey 1-1 one, one. Trillo paid his dues and that power cannot be undone Now why me slide through slick on the scene